Thor, verbal like lecture snack for you coming on electrons and emission spectrum, kind of what you've been seeing. So you guys, you may do spectroscopes. These spectroscopes that look at the different spectra of light. Light is a combination of different um, different colors, wavelengths of light. So the white light that we're looking at, the light from the ceiling, the light from the sun, the light from the candle. It's a combination of different colors, and I'll show you kind of what they look like and uh, why that is and how we can use that. And you are going to use that. You're going to use that information to um, make some intelligent guesses about the spectrum. What do you see? What are some interesting things that you see? And so electrons and emission spectrum, all about the energy wave, all about the energy wave. I will let you know. Every subject has like an energy, like photography is density, and food, and energy. Yeah. Electrons yeah. jumping around is what it is. Electrons jumping around. You guys know, based on what we've learned already, that electrons off they um, occupy discrete and specific regions around an atom. They occupy areas. We call those places shells, fields, orbitals. Uh, you know those different words that we use. Those levels. Electrons have a specific place where they're going to be. Kind of. Not a hundred percent, but it's 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 a it's a good way for us to understand this because this way we can understand what we see. So an emission spectra, and then Emmanuel had an intelligent question about emission. I've heard of emissions before, and in what context do you heard of emissions? Car emissions. Car emissions. And what is that specifically speak about? Yeah, go ahead. Cars in greenhouse come I like things where they're coming from. The word emit means to do what? To come from or to to exude out of, to come out of, to emit means to come out of, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about emission spectra, we're talking about light coming out of something. And so that's what we're looking at. We talk about emission spectra. And spectra itself mm -hmm. is um those specific wavelengths of light that we see. So about wait. Look at those bad boys. Yes, his question is like like what John said. Like the same thing. Spectrum is all of them. Spectra is like one of them. Spectrum is one. Yeah. What's the stuff the lines like the in terms of the phase? So it has like a dark cut. Let's talk about that. So here's how it kind of works. Anything that glows, anything that glows, we call that black body radiation. Anything that glows, like a light bulb or something like that, is giving off light. There is no such thing as white light. I beg to differ, Mr. Brewer. What is that right here? That looks like white light to me. It's not, though. It is what? Isn't it all the colors? It's all the colors mixed together. When you see white light, you're seeing all the colors mixed together. Uh, Newton was the one that discovered this. He's the one that actually explained that rainbows are the, the lights that spread out to separate colors. Yes? Because the one with all the colors are mixing together, it can cause like a whole lot. Because black, you're not mixing the colors. What are you mixing? Liquid. What are you mixing? Compound. What are you mi mixing? Paint. Thank you. You're mixing paint. Paint isn't light. Is paint emitting light? Yeah. Reflecting light. Yeah, it's not. It's paint doesn't glow on its own. It only has a color when light hits it, right? You put paint in a dark room. It's not emitting light. It's actually reflecting light. Yes. No. Yes. Paint is not a light source, so you're not mixing light. You're mixing paint. So if you mix a bunch of paint, which is absorbing different colors of light, and you mix a bunch of different absorbers, guess what it does? Black. It absorbs more until it turns black. Yeah? So when we talk about this, we're talking about light. We're talking about light sources, something that emits light. Thank you, Emmanuel. What a wonderful person to have. To all the, uh, to all the people listening at home, Emmanuel is uh, a wonderful person. Like and subscribe if you like Emmanuel. Like and subscribe if you like Emmanuel. Okay, so yes, that's a very common misconception, a common mistake. Thank you so much for making it intelligently. This idea, but if I mix all the colors together, it gets black. That's not true, because you're not mixing light. You're mixing paint, and that's not emitting light. So, here's the interesting thing, is that every atom of light has a different, or every atom of light, every atom has a unique uh, wavelength of light that it, it emits, different wavelengths that it, that it uh, produces, <coughs> a different wavelengths, and that's a product of its electron configuration, where its electrons are, are configured. So you see like hydrogen. What are these vertical bands? Those vertical bands are the, the, the wavelengths of light that it's emitting. The other ones 
all these other colors are not emitted by hydrogen. Okay, so when you when you have hydrogen burning and you take a picture of the spectrum, you will see the helium will see and if you look in, people don't give you and if you oxygen you see those. Those are different wavelengths of light that will be emitted from that glowing or that burning or whatever it is. How how have you gotten that chemical to give off light? By giving it energy, by burning it, you know, and you emit just those specific wavelengths. It's like a barcode for that element. Uh, well, yeah? You okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're having a hard time staying focused. That's fine, but don't be loud. Okay, so there we go. Got it? Wait a second, what does that mean? What does that mean for us with our little spectroscopes that we can hold in our pocket and we can wander around and look at different stuff? What does that mean? Yeah, uh, we can tell what stuff is made of. We can tell what stuff is made of. Can we look at the sun? Yeah. Can we look at the different wavelengths of light that are emitted from the sun? Okay. Could we then identify them based on where those wavelengths are? Oh, through. Can you even mm -hmm. like, not look at the sun? No, nah, you can look at the sun. <laughs> For those of you listening <laughs> at home, like and subscribe before you look at the sun. But then look at the sun. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> if we see uh, sunlight and we see a band here in our spectrum and we see a band here and we mm. see a band here why we would be able to make that conclusion that we would that we would say hey I know what's in the sun the sun is mostly hydrogen, hydrogen. because we see the band for hydrogen boom 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 and there are other bands the thing that's really interesting and, and Shade tell, kind of told this story we were looking at the, the emission spectrum of, the su of sunlight and we saw a band of light that we had never seen before this band right here. That specific wavelength of yellow we had not seen before when we looked at the sun. We looked at the sun and we saw this. And you'll notice there isn't any matched up with that specifically. It's just a little bit. And so they said, oh my gosh, there's a new element that we don't that doesn't exist on Earth, it doesn't exist on the sun. We call it the sun element, we call it helium. We discovered helium on the sun before we discovered it on Earth. So we saw it's a wavelength of emitted light. Yes. Well, is that how we can tell like what stars are made of like that's exactly how we tell what stars are made of. And we know what stars are mostly hydrogen. So if we see here's a, an extra point, if we know we're supposed to see this band by looking at a star from far away, and this actually that band is actually moving over to here, we know something. That star has been red shifted. Its wavelength has been shifted to the red side and we know that it's moving away from us. This is how we can figure out the things moving away from us. Hubble came up with that when he looked at the colors of the light and said I know where the hydrogen band is supposed to be. It's not there. It's shifted over. That star is must be must be stretching out its light as it moves away from us because of the Doppler effect. It's moving away from us. What he discovered was that everything is moving away from us. All stars moving away from us are equal. And the further away they are, the faster they're moving away from us, which is really bizarre. <laughs> so not only are things moving away from us, they're moving away from us faster, 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 faster. faster. Yeah. So. All of this, we know these things, and there's a reason why they know these things. Scientists don't make this stuff up. I believe that. All right. How do they know they don't make it up? Yeah. Because they write about it, sweetheart, and we can read what they write. For those of you listening at home, I just called a manual a sweetheart. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> How do we know they didn't make it up? Because we can check their work. Because you have to, we're, you're required as a scientist to review show your work, right? And so we can check it. So if they are lying, we'll catch them. Like the scientist that said vaccines cause autism. He caught him. He's, 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 not, he's, he's not a scientist anymore. anymore. So anybody that's heard of vaccines cause autism, they don't. Those of you listening at home, like and subscribe and get a vaccine. We won't give you autism. If you don't like to subscribe, you will get autism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, not subscribing causes autism. All right. So here's a, here's kind of what we're looking at for just hydrogen. Hydrogen can absorb energy. Where does that energy go, Elliot? Uh, to the first it goes to the hydrogen. I wouldn't even say the first time, but it goes inside the electrons of the hydrogen. Does it go away? No, 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 no. It, energy can never go away. Energy oh. never goes away. It just gets absorbed, right? Um, Rosie, Rosie, quick question for you. If an electron gains energy, is it going to move closer or further away from the nucleus? She said closer, but she meant to say further away. Remember, the closer an electron is to an energy or the center of the atom, the closer it is, the less energy it has. So if it gains energy, it moves further away. Uh, yeah? So, what ends up happening is this. You've got this electron right here. 
The last electron is orbiting around the proton at a discrete length. Niels Bohr is the one that came up with this idea that electrons do not have like, um, they, they have discrete kind of pathways. And it, it makes sense you know, if you look at it like this. The electron absorbs some, whoops, whoops. The electron absorbs some sort of energy. Maybe light hits it, electricity hits it, heat, heat hits it, whatever it is, that electron absorbs energy. It always absorbs in a specific amount of energy. It never absorbs, uh, it doesn't absorb a range of energy, it's a specific amount. We call that amount of quantum. Which <laughs> literally means a quantity. You talk about quantitative versus qualitative data, right? It's a quantity, it's an amount. Because it's a variable amount depending on where the electron is, we don't we can't say it absorbs this many microjoules. We just know it absorbs a certain amount. When it absorbs that energy, it changes where it is. It goes from close to the electron to further away. You see the change in energy. It doesn't stay there forever, does it? Mm -hmm. What happens to it? It goes towards the end and uh, Yeah, so that energy that energy leaves it as it leaves and the energy is emitted. It's emitted. Because it moves a discrete amount, it always emits a discrete wavelength. And because of that, we c if it's in the visible spectrum, we can see those specific colors. By the color that is emitted from the element, we can tell what it is. Hydrogen always moves a specific amount. Does that kind of make sense? Sure, it makes sense. So here's an example of hydrogen. Here's an example of hydrogen. We have one, one level, level one, level two, level three. As they jump from level one up, from level two up, or from level three up, they emit three different wavelengths of light. Those that form this band, those that form this band, and those that form this band. I said it's really dark here. That's okay. It's there. And so you have these different wavelengths being emitted at specific wavelengths because of the distance that jumps between the levels. And that's what those little characteristics are. Does that kind of make sense? Sleepy? Most likely. Go tell, go tell your mom, I don't care. <laughs> so. Does anybody have any questions about that? That's what you've been doing. You've been getting specific colors. If you look through here, you'll see there are only certain colors. It's not all of them, only certain ones. You should be able to, by calibrating your curve, you should be able to identify at what specific wavelength those lights are at. And by using those specific wavelengths, you can say, what elements emit at these specific wavelengths? 450 nanometers, 480 nanometers, 520 nanometers. And you should be able to identify elements that you, um, that are being, uh, elements in your sample. So you can find the, you can find the bars that show what elements are there on that, right? You should be able to do spectrum, yes. And I have, I have the spectrum also. Just let me 